Welcome to Hold the Line, baby. Let's keep this thing Jesus. It's Brother Keith. Grace and peace to all my subscribers that are rocking with me. If, you, if you're just coming up on this channel, man, hit that subscribe button for your guy. Smash that thing, Jack. Smash it. Thumbs up. Leave a comment. All that. Now, I seen a video today with Megan Fox, who I used to be a big fan of years ago, and, and, and promoting drug use. Ayahuasca, it's a it's a it's a heavy um, hallucinogen. I guess it's it, it's heavier than acid. So I wanted to make some content on it because if there's not if there's something about the drug life or the drug culture, let me tell you something, Jack. I know all about it from the time I was a little boy till just seven or eight years ago. You know, I've been the slave master selling drugs running dope houses, trafficking, and I've been the slave. Hooked on Oxycontin for, for six years, snorting heroin, all that stuff until God delivered me and brought me through that mess. So I'm qualified and certified to com about, comment about drugs. And let me tell you what, when they announced, oh, I heard you did, uh, Arsenio Hall was doing the interview, it was Jimmy Kimmel, uh, not Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon show. And as soon as he said ayahuasca, these people went to cheering. And, and you know they got the applause things in there. So they got people, they're promoting this thing. I've heard Joe Rogan talk about it. You know, and, and, and here we are on the side of believing in Christ Jesus. And they want to tell us that we're living in fantasy world. But yet they're trying to escape into a fantasy world. And what comes down to it is the reason why the things that God are so foolish to these people is because they don't know God. They don't understand God. They are going to reject God with all the power that they got in their soul because they're natural. They think in a natural way. They're not purchased. They're not born again. The Father is not drawing them in. So these folks are going to, going to rebel against the Word of God. They're going to rebel against Bible orthodoxy. They're, and they're going to promote things like this ayahuasca drug or doing drugs, period. Because what it does is, and the way she was talking about the ritual that she had to do to do this thing was disturbing at all. Even when I was on drugs, I wouldn't have fell for it. Because even when I was a little bitty boy, people used to play with Ouija boards, and I used to not play with that stuff. I'd be like, uh-uh, I ain't digging that. And then later on in life, people that were in the drug world with me, I had homies that was in the Santeria, devil worship, um, Roots, uh, 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 Caribbean black magic, all that stuff. And I always shunned away from that stuff, man. There was something that, that, that made my spirit not feel right, even before I was born again. So now, here we are years later, and I'm hearing these people talking about this experience and how you got to do it. And what it comes down to it is, nobody out here is really happy with their simple little lives. They might front and floss and do all this stuff for the Instagram and the YouTube channels and all that stuff. These jokers might do all that, but at the end of the day, all you see online is the highlight reel of these jokers' lives, man. And I'm guilty of it, too. We put our highlight reels on there, but you don't know what people are feeling by themselves. Suicide's at an all-time rate. O overdosing on drugs is at an all-time rate. Mental illness is at an all-time all time high. I'm sorry. It's at an all-time high. All this stuff is going on, but yet people want you to think that they're living this prima and proper life. It's because they're so mixed up in something that's pagan. That's pagan worship. That's the occult. That's what it looks like. It's what it looks like. And look here. The devil don't show up in pitchforks and horns, Joker. He ain't showing up in pitchforks and horns. He's going to show up like everything you ever loved. An experience. He's the deceiver. He's going to know how to get to you. And this is a way that he gets to you. And when you when you start doing this stuff, I've seen people do crystal meth and get so high that they end up being possessed. Some of them I see now walking the streets. And they've been, and they've been possessed for years and years and years. And even me praying for them and trying to talk the gospel to them, it don't help. Because their ears 
are shut to the Lord. They don't want to hear the truth. The truth sounds like foolishness, but yet they go and, 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 and ingest drugs daily. And I was a drug addict for a time. And I was the slave, I was the slave master for, for a long time. I kept people on drugs. I used to push drugs. I had people I'd call every day. What you need? What you, what you need? I'll get it. Whatever you had to do. So I was the slave master. And then I got hooked on opiates later on in life. And I became the slave. The person that needed a fix. All the money was gone. All the clout was gone. All, 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 all the customers were gone. I became my best customer. So I know both sides of the, of the track. And it's demonic at the end of the day. You, 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 there's two things you're going to serve. You're either going to serve God or the devil's going to the devil's going to deceive you into think that you're serving God but you're going to be serving Satan. So why? How do we find out about this? How do we get to the root of everything? The scriptures, baby. Everything's got to line up with the scriptures. If people start telling you about an experience or something you need to try, if that thing don't line up with them scripts, Boy, you better run up out of there. Flee. Flee up out of that thing, man. Don't fall for it. So listen, if you're thinking about doing things like this, if, if, if the occult's kind of enticing you, if you're somebody that's not saved, you're not seeking Jesus right now, and the occult is enticing you, I want you to know that that's not, that's, that, that's an evil spirit. And it's dangerous. Don't do it. It's going to open up a portal that you don't want to get into and you don't want to see. And you might live a good life for a time. But at the end of the day, all this stuff we live for, all these pleasures, all these you know houses and cars and all this other stuff, is it really worth it? Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, your life is like a, va uh, your life is like a vapor. It's going to be over in the drop of a hat. We're going to be on our deathbed. Everybody's promised one thing in his life, and that's death. And when you're sitting on that deathbed, you think you're going to be worried about the Instagram post or how many followers you had or anything like that, Jack? Heck no, you're going to be trying to get right with God. But it might be too late. It might be too late. Don't knock on that door. Because wide is the path of, path of destruction. Narrow is the path to life to Jesus. So I pray somebody that's hearing this and, and, and that's, that's being swayed by this evil spirit, man, to, to fight against it, man, and seek God. Seek the gospel. Death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. Hold the line. Woo!